to look at mm. ASEAN mm. as a whole mm. uh, because that's where we get the synergy and the 2 plus 2 equals 5 effects. Mm -hmm. But each individual country in ASEAN will have to be strong uh, mm -hmm. because we cannot have synergy out of uh, 10 yes. weak countries. We, we need 10 strong countries, but the synergy will be such that they'll be stronger because of integration. Mm -hmm. So each country will have to be strong on its own. For us in Malaysia, we have done well, as I said mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. uh, from being a poor country to being a high middle income country within two generations, and, and we should be very happy, we are. But we are not uh, not happy enough. Uh, we want to be uh, what we think we potentially can, which is to be a high income country, uh, just like the developed countries. And to do that, we look at our model uh, that has been very successful, extremely successful before. But we found interestingly that mm -hmm. that model, though extremely successful before, is not quite relevant moving forward. Yes. So we have changed our model, and as I explained, uh, the, there are five or six areas that, that form the trust of the new model, yes. the new transformation program. One is uh, moving away from factor-led growth uh, towards productivity-led growth. Number two, from balanced regional growth towards focusing on urban agglomeration and, and concentrated industrial clusters is two. Number three, from sector diversification towards specialization in niche industry. I see. Four, before that, we used to restrict foreign skilled labor. Now we are very open and we embrace them and we give all sorts of incentive for them to come. Number five, uh, we build schools and hospitals and all that. I think we've done very well. But now we are going moving towards uh, the soft infrastructure, quality of teachers and, and the quality of the workforce, etc. Maintenance and rather than building. And uh, the role of government uh, has been quite significant. In, in, in some respect, it will continue to be because we just can't move away. But we really want the private sector from here on to, to be the engine of growth. And our role will then be a facilitator. In fact, for that purpose, we set up a facilitation fund of 20 billion I see. To, to help the private sector. Private sector will build hospitals instead of us, will build schools instead of us, will build universities instead of us. And we say, okay, to make your projects viable, if they're not viable, here is that 5% or 10%. So we save 95%, even if we give 5%, we save 95%. Right, and we right. get the hospital done. And sort of leveraged government spending, leveraged, leveraged spending. through private sector. So that, that is big, that's quite big uh, in the 10 Malaysia plan. I see. And uh, and we used to uh, have our KPIs, key mm -hmm. indicators, performance indicators, based on how many schools we build and how mm -hmm. many uh, roads, how long, yes. how many kilometers of road, etc. It's no more. Right? Basically, it's how the quality. We are going towards quality. As well, it's more difficult to measure, uh, but we are going towards that. And, and so the whole mindset, uh, our mindset has changed, the government mindset has changed. And, and to us, we are taking this transformation very, very strongly. So if other countries, I'm sure, I'm sure other countries uh, to some extent are also doing that. And uh, beyond ASEAN, really. Uh, because ASEAN also has to, just as uh, one country has to leverage on ASEAN, ASEAN itself has to leverage on India, China, and Asia as a whole. True. The, the advantage for us at this point of time is that, in a way, this downgrading of uh, US bond, yes. AAA, yes. is quite significant for us, although it doesn't, has not created too much of a downside uh, in the States or elsewhere. Uh, our earlier assumption on investment by central banks in this region and others too was that the US was risk free. Yes. No more. No more. That's an axiom actually. Ah, yeah. It has to be because ah, yes, it's a country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was risk free, but it's no more because it can be downgraded. Mm -hmm. The signaling effect of that. So, in the context, we are we are <coughs> we are already trading more among ourselves. We used to export 18% of our products to states. Now it's only 10. We used to export 3% of our product to China. It's now 12%. So we're already trading more among ourselves. Yes. But with this uh, downgrading, etc., we can even have more investment among ourselves without in, without we investing in the U.S. for treasury bills paying 2%. Mm. Why don't we invest in infrastructure funds? That's almost a necessity, isn't yeah, it? Almost a necessity. Yeah, if, um... and, and the interesting part of... ASEAN, mm -hmm. 
and Asia taken together. I like to see ASEAN and Asia taken together. We have surplus countries and deficit countries, and that's interesting. Yeah. So we have surplus China. Yes. We can take the money and lend to deficit India, deficit Vietnam. But the demand is India has to build roads uh, for the next uh, 20, 30 years, and billions and billions, and from 50 billion uh, US dollar worth of roads will have to be built in the next one or two years. Mm. That's how they have to uh, avoid the supply constraint, roads, hotels, etc., ports, bridges. And uh, and uh, China has the, has the fund surplus country. Yeah. So if we can coordinate among ourselves, I think we can depend less on the West. And, and in a way, that will hedge us in, the, in case there's another headwind coming from the West in the future. But we can optimize on our strength and on our reserves. Depend, yes, but um, Asia as a whole is, of course, in or the emerging markets are in quite serious surplus relative to the West. So you're suggesting that some of that can be taken up well, by ASEAN, and, and immediate. ASEAN can maximize or deal working with uh, Asia. ASEAN right. can work, leverage using Asia. And then for for ASEAN to leverage this 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 asset, um, this this, this uh, the surplus and the reserves. There would have to be a fairly Indonesia, large example, infrastructure build. Yeah, Indonesia needs plenty of infrastructure. Yes, yes. And uh, the entire China region is outside the uh, outside uh, ASEAN. But China yeah. can use its large surplus yes. to help Indonesia. And we in Malaysia have all the expertise of uh, building uh, roads, etc. And we're yes. doing it in, yes. in, in India. We can do it in Indonesia. We can work together. It's, there will yeah. be so many opportunities for win-win situation. Yes. We just can liberate on each other. First, within ASEAN, and then ASEAN uh, leverage within Asia. This, um, to take the example of road building, um, yes, there's certainly a huge need in Indonesia. And, you know, for example, I think Malaysian companies were involved in the Trans-Jakarta Highway. It didn't quite come no, it through. Time. It, it, it takes time. Yeah. I think we have to have patience. I know things in line. It takes time, but we cannot lose heart. We mm. just have to slog on. Mm. Many of the problems were actually in terms of the business model or, or regulatory ones. So what um, I've had sort of Indonesian ministers, the former minister of trade, for example, say to me, I think the key need is to have a private-public partnership to fund this, that too, right? That is very and this important. is something Malaysia has pioneered. Yeah. I think we have pioneered and the pri private-public partnership. The 20 billion facilities one is a classical example yes. of the private-public partnership that, that we need to do. But I think in terms of, that is very good in each country, this idea of public-private partnership. That model can be used in ASEAN as a whole, or even when we are leveraging ASEAN, leveraging with Asia. The more, the more critical, uh, the necessary but not sufficient uh, uh, factor, condition that you need is to buy in from each ASEAN capital, that 2 plus 2 equals 5. We yes. Have to buy in. Yes. Uh, that is more. That is the most. Like, if at all, we say the most because there is a tendency for each ASEAN country to say, "Okay, this sounds good. But do I really benefit? What is it in for me?" So we have to tell everyone that it's a win-win for all. Although yes. you may not see it directly, but if we take a little bit longer term or look at it indirectly, it's a win-win for all. Yes. Once we get the buy-in from the leadership. Of, of all these ASEAN countries, then the next step would be easier. I think the most important step is to get by. And then in that respect, I think what CIMB is doing is excellent, setting up this uh, new unit uh, under the LDU. Yeah. Thank uh, you, sir. To, to, to do that is, is an excellent first step forward. We, we try to bring some of these arguments um, uh, 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 to people. Um, and also we have the secretariat for this new venture, the business club, yes, the yeah. ASEAN Business yeah. Club. And there, I think in a panel that I chaired this morning, there was a very interesting consensus that businesses cannot just, they, they don't have to just add, beyond merely advocating, right, and just putting the argument about integration. What they do can help bring the region together by spreading ownership, you know, creating stakeholders across yeah, the region. Right. So that if you have Malaysian companies that also have significant Indonesian ownership, for example, then this shared interest can start to build bridges and take barriers down. Yeah, this uh, value chain actually. Yeah. You say, uh, That's right, value chain is another way of... Value chain must consist of everybody. Then right, only everyone right. will feel part of it. But sometimes uh, for 
political, domestic political reasons, etc. We say, okay, this will change, we just want to keep ourselves. Yes. Uh, maybe short term it makes sense, but in the long run, you create more business and uh, by just expanding the value chain and say, okay, we do this and uh, Indonesians will do that and etc. I think that, that that's excellent. That's an excellent idea. We, we have to be inclusive. Yes. Like what we have done ourselves, and although we have been inclusive all the while, but our Prime Minister came out with this slogan, uh, One Malaysia. Yes. Uh, and people say, well, we always been One Malaysia, but you have to say it loud and you have to do action to show that you are really One Malaysia and we have, we have taken that. So we have to similarly uh, show that we are one ASEAN. We, we know we are one ASEAN. We, we have done a lot of uh, projects together in terms of customs. Yes. And I myself am involved in uh, Binyaga and Oh uh, yeah. Okay. And the Northern Corridor, the IMTGT, Binyaga yes. IMTGT, responsible. So we, we are doing a lot of small things, but we need a big, big push or, or, or from top down to say one ASEAN, one ASEAN, and we have to do it. And that that will help. And we have to we, 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 we cannot be selfish. And some of the things we are doing, and, and we, we, we have to open up and let other ASEAN members do, so that everyone feels that they are part of it. It's an ec ec excellent sort of points and, and very strong ones about the need for an ASEAN, sir. I what I wonder though if um, people complain on the business community or observers in general, they acknowledge that the governments come up with some, wh when they come together at ASEAN regional for, fora, have very visionary ambitious projects such as the economic community, right? But that when they go back home, as Lito Camacho in, in your panel earlier said as well, when they go, when these politicians go back home, they don't have the constituency for this. It's difficult for them to talk one ASEAN when back home it's just my country, you know. So one suggestion that uh, Dr. Sri Nazir came up with this morning is, um, or one thought is, could we institutionalize some of this better within the governments? In each cabinet, for example, could we kind of commit to having a kind of an ASEAN minister? What are your thoughts on, on that, that's one a way. suggestion like that's that? One way. Or perhaps you have but other the, yeah, ideas. The, the, the major problem is that the ministers who are responsible yeah. for, who attend these uh, ASEAN forums, etc., mm -hmm. are very convinced of what we need to do. Yeah. The issue is the actual projects are handled by line ministers. The minister in charge of yeah. public okay. works department, okay. the minister in charge of... Uh, Agriculture, the minister in charge of domestic trade. These are the line ministers. They I don't see. necessarily mm -hmm. attend the meetings and, and share yes. the philosophy. The question is how to bring the line ministers uh, to to be to, to be there. This is very because, useful. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what we have to do. Decide. I don't have an answer, but there must be some forum or some mechanism to bring the line ministers. Uh, but it's very interesting that you, I mean, it's good to identify yeah, where the, the gap line, is. Yeah, the line ministers will have to be brought up in right. some form or the other to the forum so that they themselves can decide, okay, this has been the policy, this bridge has to be built, it has to be built, and, and they are committed to it. Now now it is it goes down, Yes. they hear about it. It's at heads of government, government yeah. foreign ministry, uh, and maybe see? trade. Yeah. Trade or yeah. Planning. Planning units, it yeah. doesn't go to the line minister, it doesn't go to the minister of JKR or domestic trade. <coughs> so we, we, we ourselves are thinking uh, in, at our level, uh, ASEAN level that, that I chair, uh, that you know, I'm part of uh, the IMTGT and the Binyaga. Yes. And how to bring the, the, these uh, line ministers into our forum. But this is work in progress. I think these sub-regional efforts yeah. are very, very important. Yeah. Progress is made doesn't have then to be all ten countries, yeah. right? Even there, we have this problem regions. of blind ministers not knowing and not pushing hard enough. But we are working on that. But the same model can be used in the in the bigger framework of ASEAN. Okay, so remains for me to thank you very much for taking the time.